Greetings one and all, Chris Courtney here, New Pragmatics. Time for the feedback loop. We've got a, um, a trio, a medley, if you will. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I always say medley after I say trio. Um, Abby's back, Katie's back, Eddie's back. I love this, I love this mix. Um, thank you so much for the folks that showed up uh, last night for the, for the whiteboarding session. It was uh, fun, it was great to see Ricardo back. Uh, hadn't seen Ricardo in a few days and um, and everybody who was able to participate um, glad that you could we'll be doing that again in a couple of weeks um, and we'll have different prompts so um, if you weren't able to attend last night's whiteboarding session know that there'll be another practice session coming up soon and again whiteboarding it's really all about um, having a tool for breaking down a problem when you're collaborating with others so um, this is very much something that you could do in a work environment it's also something that you often see happen during interviews so um, I you know a lot of last night was walking through methods like okay yes how are you how, how do you tackle what's on the board but what else should be going on what else should you be considering as you're trying to address what is on the board in front of you um, it's not as, as it's not always uh, as, as straightforward. And as Eve will probably tell you, um, like five minutes goes really fast. Um, so that said, not that we whiteboard it for five minutes, but t periods of time move move at a much faster rate than you might anticipate when you're busy head down working on a problem. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen so we get this underway. All right, so we're gonna start here with Eddie. Eddie Eddie has made a resubmission, and the issue we had last time was uh, Eddie was focused on um, Eddie was focused on making um, well, he, he had done a really great competitive matrix, but he had he had organizations selected that weren't really the target, so. I gave Eddie a, um, a, a target to kind of build around, and I gotta I gotta say I'm really impressed. Not only did you, I, Eddie, I was thinking you were gonna add Beach City Sports to your other list, but you just ended up remaking what appears like the entire list because none of the other work that you did is here anymore. So you got Beach City Sports, Balboa Ski, Ski Club, Volitude Sports, and Newport Beach Recreation and Sports. So you have you've clearly uh, taken the time to um, you've clearly taken the time to dive in here and and really begin picking this apart. Um, when you look at the positioning statement uh, for these, uh, get in and get social that ma that matches up with with um, with what Active Weekends is doing. Um, it looks like. This okay, so ski and sports club they actually run ski trips. That's interesting. Um, so vast array of leagues, both indoor and outdoor. See, this is beginning to feel more like more like the company that you're trying to assist. Um, even even just in this, you know, adult pickup basketball league, adult soccer. Yeah, these are all leagues, and that's you know this again. You found you found the wheelhouse. Okay. But what's most important is it was just pointing you to Beach City Sports and then you went, oh, you mean like that? And you began to expand your competitive set in that direction. So I really do applaud the fact that you, you took and instead of just adding, you pivoted the whole thing and you said, oh, okay, well, I know how to break down competitors. Let's just do it with a whole different set that's closer to the client. Um, so... You know, pricing structure, um, it's kind of interesting. This is the first spot where I see you mentioned COVID, um, even though you didn't mention it directly. You said uh, cards will not be charged until city permits, uh, until city permits are granted to reopen. So that means that in many ways, this organization can't do business right now. I'm curious if that's what you find on the others. Um, so, Membership May first to April thirtieth. I, you know, I don't see, you know, and so maybe this is different because it's a lot of there's travel involved. Um, yeah, so so it doesn't look like it does not look like they have 
or at least at this at this stage they they haven't like mentioned that there's an issue uh likely targets members um so the short summary here this is where we begin to get into covid and um you know, Beach City Sports has been greatly impacted by COVID-19. As a result, it's been forced to cancel many games and tournaments for the foreseeable future. There are only two activities, which are cornhole and virtual trivia. This company sounds like they are in a lot of the same dire, distrait, dire straits as Active Weekends. Um, so, in this Balboa Sports thing which is 60 years old, or been going on for 60 years, their last organized event was March 15th through 20th, 2020. So while they haven't directly, at well, it says, uh, previously offered a whole array of outdoor activities consistently throughout the year up until California implemented its mandate shelter in place in October 19th, 2020. Everything since then or, and currently has been canceled, postponed until further notice. That gives you a picture into what everybody's struggling with. The entire current schedule roster league fitness has been postponed until 2021. Okay. Um, although smaller base, they too have been severely impacted by COVID-19 as of February 24, 2020 was their last posted game. Out of 11 sports, pickleball and tennis are currently the only two approved at, approved at, at pickleball and tennis are the only current, are the currently, are currently, gosh, words, Chris, the only two approved activities offered at Newport Beach Recreation and Sports uh, throughout this pandemic. Even with this, team sideline explicitly states that all participants must, must respect social distancing guidelines as recommended by the CDC. So, this gives you a really good glimpse into what the other organizations are dealing with and it helps it helps you see you know like um beach city sports for instance they have two events i'm not sure what they are but i'm going to view the screenshot really fast um by the way this is just a really good breakdown so cornhole and virtual trivia night right you, you mentioned that um, so it seems like cornhole is playable, uh, cornhole, pickleball, tennis, virtual events. That, that, that's what I'm seeing here. Like there is no basketball pickup league happening at the moment, nor probably should there be, um, and virtual trivia night. That's the only thing Balboa ski appears to be doing, um, It's interesting. I want to see this volitude. Ooh. Okay. Well, regardless, um, this is pretty in depth, Eddie. I feel I feel really good about where you're at now versus where you were, and and I'll give you some direct. I'll give you some more guided feedback in in the program journal, but but because um, I want I do want to go in deeper on this, but this is much much closer to the goal um, and um, I appreciate you putting in, in the extra effort here um, we're gonna come over here to Katie now and Katie has her fresh market case study and one of the things that we had that we were discussing yesterday Katie was the fact that this intro section is is really meant to to it's really meant to get people excited about talking to you it's not meant to show everything about the project but it needs to show more than what it was showing um, and that and that's something that we've discovered from other people who have gone down this this path um, you know you you want to tighten up that that intro to where it doesn't feel like it goes on forever but at the same time you need to find a way to work in information about about the visual visual information 
that helps them see the quality of your work and the depth of your work. And that was really what was missing when we were reading through this initially. Um, also, you were, um, I, I do want to come back to this because um, this, this, kind of, this kind of paints it as a, this issue here, uh, Fresh Market would be competing with HelloFresh, Blue Apron, and other companies with large followings. Um, the online meal delivery market is very competitive and already has big name companies taking up most of the market. This is the thing that I was wanting specifically to hone in on. Most of the market, true, like there's a few players in this market, but the market itself is very small by comparison with like restaurant dining or grocery shopping. Like the number of people that do online meal delivery is relatively low compared to the number of people who go to the grocery store. So. So I wouldn't say that this is a saturated market and I didn't want it to come across as you were trying to make something for a market that was already full. Like this market can expand. There are major players existing in the market. There are name brand names in the market, but it's not a huge market yet. Okay. So just wanted to make sure that that sort of, that sort of delineation got in here and basically somewhere in here. Um, in the what you learn, I'm glad to see that you you kind of backed away from this idea of, yeah, you know, I've never done this before, so this is my first UX project. That's going to be like red red lights for anybody who's reading this wanting to avoid people who were recently students, okay? I want you to talk about literally what you learned. You didn't learn that, that it was your first UX project. Focus on... Yeah, I, I've, I may have failed a lot, but I learned even more. This project taught me the importance of communication, even though I thought I had enough information from the stakeholder interviews in the beginning, I, I wasn't asking enough questions, and so on. So you've done a good job of going back through your notes and identifying uh, identifying the, the missing pieces. Um, and I also appreciate the fact that you took the time to point out, um, you took the time to point out you know, the, the, the role that story mapping had in making it easier for you to later build your prototype. And that's why I mentioned like, come through and show some of the planning documentation. Because if you just look at like the homepage, it might seem that, oh, well you drew a nav and you put a photo there and yeah, great. Anybody could do that. But what they're not seeing is the consideration that went into how do we position this product? What things should we be building and when should we be building them? And that's something that you really only get from looking at a story map like this. Um, additionally, being able to see like where it started and where it ended, I think is pretty important. I would probably screen grab this without the guides. Um, you know, or, you know, I, I might just, I might just come back in and, and clean this up just a bit. Um, because in some ways, in some ways, I, it's weird. Some, some parts of me like the grittiness of, oh, it's, it's Figma. And other parts of me just want to see, I just want to see a couple of, of wireframes. And then I want to see a couple of finished versions of the same page to see how it grew, how it changed. Um, but, but it's, it's certainly getting, getting toward what I'm looking for there. Um, and then you have your assets produced and then you get into your research. And I still want to, I still want to dive in and, and do a, a, a little more digging here. Um, but my main concern was how do we get this up and running? Because this intro, you could pluck this intro out, get it into a, a simple portfolio um, and begin applying. Okay. That's, that's the goal for you. The goal is, hey, I know there's more work to do, but I need to, need to get something up and running very quickly. So your approach here is gonna be a little two-pronged moving forward in that you're going to begin going through the career efforts, but you're also still going to be finishing up Fresh Market, okay? So I wanna, I wanna, see, you, um, I wanna see you begin two-pronging. I'll leave some detailed notes in your journal um, but but this is a, a very exciting moment for you because um, this means that it's time to start talking about you know resumes and LinkedIn and and 
uh, about you pages and all of all the things that go along with portfolio so so um, uh, we've got a bit more work here but I'm not gonna let that I'm not, not going to let that cloud the ability to move forward all right um, Abby okay so Abby's got her stakeholder interview Abby is on the other side of fresh market and um, Abby if if you heard anything about what Katie said what I learned it's that Katie was like I didn't ask enough questions during stakeholder interviews that's right that's exactly right so you have a collection of questions here target audience why will the user care about this who will benefit from the addition to the store? What, what customer needs led to this project idea? How, what are you hoping your users will get out of this? Does the, what does the app website need to do for the user? Uh, what sets your company store apart? Explain how your product will differentiate. What is your top priority for us getting to get right? Describe your perfect outcome. Um, what are the biggest concerns? Are there updates changes to the company that would affect this project that's good a couple of things that I'm a couple of things right off the top that I think are missing uh, what's the timeline when are you trying when are you trying to release this now the answer you you will get from a client will often vary because sometimes the client will, will talk in absolutes like oh we want to be completely done in three weeks and you're like well that's nuts you're not gonna be completely done you might have an MVP um, if we go really raw and dirty, um, but otherwise it might take a couple of months. Um, but you want to you want to know where their head is at. Sometimes these initiatives have been ongoing for years, and they could be saying, "We want it done ASAP. We got to have it done right now." And you need to understand, like, how long has the company been pushing toward this? So that's another question. Like, how long has this been on the board? for your organization like is this something that you're just getting started on is this is this like a long festering thing that's been around for five years you need to know that mentality going in because that's going to impact how they see it you're new to it but they could have been dealing with this for years and just somebody finally said we gotta do it um the other side of it is again their timeline like not, so how long has the idea been around great What's your timeline for release from now? All right. And then the other, the other big thing that always comes up is how are people going to find out about this? Like, you know, are they going to find out in the store? Are you going to, are you going to put like buy a bunch of Facebook ads? Um, you know, do you have a database of your customers that you could reach out to? Is there is like, what is the plan for marketing said thing? Because when you talk about, what does success look like? And I, actually, I don't know if that answer, that question's... Uh, okay, so you, you said describe your perfect outcome for the project. I might tweak that question, actually, to being... Can you, can you define what success looks like for this project? That's a little different because success is a range. Perfection is a point. And the last thing in the world I want you aiming for as a product designer is a pinpoint on this, in, in, you know, trying to get pinpoint accuracy, it might not even be the right pinpoint, okay? They may have one idea of what success looks like, but after you do your research, there's actually this broad range that's over to this side or over to that side, but they're already honed in right here. But if you can get them talking about what does success look like in a broader term, that gives you some more room to operate in. It gives you some 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 range. And you know, if it's over here and the, the the likelihood of success is over here, you can skew them over a bit. But if they're locked in on what one exact thing is success, well, if your research turns up that that's not what success is likely to be, you can see where the issue is. Um, I also like the fact that this is state stackholder questions. <laughs> anyway, not a big deal. Uh, it says stakeholder interview right there. It's fine. Um, but these are these are good questions. But as Katie points out, you're going to need more, and there's a few that are missing right away. Also, keep in mind that whatever answers that you get you, you get back from me on this, um, you're going to want to do a second round of follow up. Okay. 
but you'll get those later today. All right, that's going to do it for today's edition of the Feedback Loop. Uh, Eddie, fantastic work overhauling that um, overhauling that entire co competitive matrix. Like, I, I thought you did really good. Um, good, very good research document. Uh, and, and the second round, so this that was like that was like um, options five through nine based on the first first round that you did. Um, Katie. Really great to see you getting this nudged closer and closer to the finish line. I do think there is a, you know, we, we dual prong this all the time. Um, Abby's been dual pronging UI and UX all the way to get to fresh market as quickly as she has. So, you know, there's nothing keeping you from jumping into career and beginning to, to work through that material. Um, but I'll leave you some, some direct feedback in your journal. And then, and then Abby, um, a good slate of questions. I did think that there, there were a few that were missing, but we'll have some more back and forth later today um, with regard to the questions that you did present. All right, folks, without further ado, that's going to wrap it up for me. I hope that all of you have a great day. I'm going to see many of you today. Very, bu very busy meeting day. And uh, for the rest of you, I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.